Quite interesting melee weapon to look at, Wolf Sledge comes packed with interesting features that offer wide range of use. For one, it's worth mentioning that it's a hammer. The reason I say that is because of its stance, crushing ruin, which is flexible and has multi-hits, headshot opportunities and strong multipliers to damage. On top of that, holding E will throw the hammer up to 40 meters away and it does have a homing feature, meaning that you do not have to aim perfectly on the target, but just be somewhat there. On hits it explodes and does 5 meter area of effect damage and if you hit heavy attack mid flight it will explode dealing even more area of effect damage and consuming all your combo. Homing feature does have its pitfalls as it can turn away from a particular enemy you'd like to hit. Sometimes it feels like it has a mind of its own. Talking about combo. Heavy attacks have 100% heavy attack efficiency meaning that your combo does not get consumed. Only attacks that consume combo on wolf sludge are heavy slam attack and heavy explosion. So you can see how it can be fun spamming that heavy attack at 12x combo multiplier. To add to it, attack speed is pretty nice and comfortable to play around and range of it is almost the highest in the game at 3.1 meter. Issue is, it has low critical chance, only 19% which does not sync all that well with that heavy attack potential. Status chance is high at 33% which is good, but weapon does have a lot of impact, followed by a bit less slash and very small amount of puncture. Add to it that hammers do not force bleeding on heavy attacks, or any other attacks, so you can see the potential scaling problem. It can possibly be solved by an expensive ribbon that has a negative impact, but I am yet to catch a truly perfect ribbon for this on the market. Because build is complicated, you cannot use thrown weapon exclusive mods, but even if you could, I have no clue how I'd fit them in. For critical chance it's a toss up between sacrificial steel and blood rush. Because this hammer is not the strongest of ones, then you might use it for quicker missions. So sacrificial steel might prevail just to have those viable crits. But for anything where you are staying a bit or it's about heavier enemies, blood rush is a better option as only at 5x the combo you beat what sacrificial gives you in terms of critical hits. So it's a choice of config to be honest. But for other things condition overload works nice because sludge does have a good status chance but when you throw a hammer at someone that enemy likely does not have any status effects on them to begin with so not using pressure point or its prime counterpart can be tough for those types of attacks. Whipping wounds helps obviously but like blood rush only if you're running a mission for a bit. And you can see that weapon does work well as self primer, yeeting a hammer before going in deals high status and helps condition overload work. Attack speed and wind up speed help but not in a super obvious way, because throwing a hammer is not a heavy attack. Charge speed for throw is affected by attack speed and not charge speed. But charge speed bonus from Amalgam Organ Shatter and Killing Blow only helps with actual heavy attacks. So for my money I'm building this for viral, a slash overkill is a no-go. What helps with condition overload is that thrown attacks do blast damage on explosion, both on contact explosion as well as heavy explosion. So you can get some stacks going for you, combining with the fact that heavy attacks don't consume combo you can still stack some decent damage out of this thing. What might look slightly weird is that for my quick mission build for Wolf Sledge I still run combo duration, but not Blood Rush or Weeping Wounds. That's because of that heavy attack. Even on 2x the combo it's still nice to have that option. Now in that place another good option is Shattering Impact for maximum flexibility of the weapon because even thrown attacks do strip armor. You can swap Sacrificial Steel for Blood Rush and Drifting Contact for Weeping Wounds for more scalability so you need either Naramon or Dexterity Arcanes or both to make that work. With my specific Riven you can argue that because I have critical damage on it I could swap Organ Shatter with Killing Blow on my more scalable build. But I think that choice comes down to just how frequently do you use heavy attacks because killing blow doesn't affect regular attacks while amalgam organ shatter does and it also affects heavy attacks so 
something. It's just a matter of choice and your particular use case. Only with my overkill melee build with Valkyr Prime, I have both in. Because Valkyr, as she is, I have Arcane Fury for damage, Arcane Avenger for extra critical chance, and obviously Warcry for attack speed. So I can take out Fury and put in Killing Blow. This actually becomes a Steel Path worthy build. From all my ifs and buts, you can see that to build such flexible weapon, it's hard to pull it off in such way to make everything work well. And there's no one way to do it. It all depends on what you want to use it for and what's your actual dynamics with it. What do you prefer? I generally stick for more critical damage as I play less around its heavy attacks and I'm more about having fun throwing that hammer in their faces. As mentioned, Killing Blow does not work on regular throne attacks, only when you trigger a heavy explosion. That's why I rarely put it on there for my regular build. I do it for some endurance and it works, but triggering heavy explosion gets rid of the combo, which, as we mentioned above, is cool to have at 12x all the time for your heavy attack spam. So there's a conflict of builds for that weapon. Also, auto block can mess with charging the throw, but not always for some reason. I think it's fun having such weapons in the game. It's so flexible but doesn't do anything on top level and such flexibility allows for more variations in your build depending on what you focus on. But it's not the best hammer, far from it. It's not close to being the best throwable weapon by any margin and as for heavy attacks there are much better weapons. But none of those weapons are all of these things together. Wish there were more weapons like this in this game. While not the strongest, it still deals quite easily with sortie level enemies, which is what most people play with. With a good build, it can be good enough for Steel Pad, but there are better weapons for Steel Pad and its endurance. And with an actual dedicated melee build, it can be beast of a weapon, even for Steel Pad endurance. None of those limitations take anything away from this weapon's ability to give me pure joy when I hit a headshot or pop that Nox Aquarium. That's it for this one, thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.